Bakery, pastry. <laughs> it's really classic on pop shop. Super good. Let's go. It's not simple. 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 It's not Il, il, il me faut toujours. Euh... Non, mais la tarte, je crois que je me suis trompée. Ah, oui. Écoutez, c'est très gentil. Ben, je vous en prie. Merci que beaucoup. Tout aille bien pour vous, surtout. Merci beaucoup. Vous oui, au moins la, la ah, on deux amis. Oui. <rire> okay. For today's video, I got two different pastries. I got one from the mom and pop shop that I really, really like. And then it's a little more simple, a little more rustic, maybe not as like, I would even venture to say as good quality, but it's cheaper and it is still like really, really good. And they do a lot of traditional recipes. After I went to this like bougie, I hate that word, I can't remember, this nice place, Signature by De Grange, or De Grange, I mean De Grange. Don't like that, this English crap, I don't know why, I just, yeah, but, it's cool, and it's a pink box, so... But, um... Yeah, so... From this place... I got a... Pastry called a Paris-Brest. Like the city, Paris and Brest, two different cities. And then I got this one, it's just a... A prune tart, so very, yeah. Um, so, here we go. Oh my gosh. I just had lunch, so I'm ready for dessert. But... Oh, this looks so good. So, 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 so good. Oh my word. So, this is called a Paris Brest. This one at this place, it's actually in a, like a rectangular, almost a Claire like shape. Typically, traditionally, the Paris Brest is supposed to be in the shape of a circle almost. It is a circle, like a donut almost with a hole in the middle. And what you do is you have basically choux pastry. A lot of pastries in France have the base of choux pastry. And then in the middle, then you, you cut like into a donut and then you cut it and you fill it in the middle. This is like an eclair shape, but with praline cream and praline as well on the bottom. And there are often hazelnuts as well. And then on top it looks like powdered sugar and walnuts and almonds and hazelnuts. So, super excited about this one. I don't know if I'm gonna eat both of these today, but I'm gonna open them at least and I'll eat one probably. That's for sure. This is the prune tart. This place they make all the jam, all the fillings, everything there. A lot of places they'll like make them in a kitchen, a big kitchen, and then they'll you know send them out to their locations. So this place they make them downstairs, and you can hear the guys actually at the bottom cooking and making everything. It's a cafe too. So super excited. The crust looks super thick. I think I'll probably eat this one today. The very best. And I'll have this tomorrow. Or tonight. Or an hour later. Who knows? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna try to like not eat this so much in front of everyone and make everyone jealous, but I will take one bite before I start. Oh 
holy crap. I don't know if you can see, but inside is the praline. On the bottom, there's the very dark, dark layer of the praline. And then it's on the top, there's the praline cream. Yeah. Okay, I'm trying to use a different angle for the camera too, so we're gonna see how this one looks this time. I haven't done used the same angle every single time, so it's not gonna be as good looking, but whatever. Mmm. Oh. So, one more thing. Ever since living in France, now and before, you become a snob about certain things. Like, it's so true. The French people are not snobs. They really aren't. They just know what's good. And they don't necessarily like to accept less. <laughs> so, I think it's like, when you just know better, you really try to be polite about it, but ultimately you're like expressing or talking about or showing in some way that you know better about something. So ine inevitably you're gonna look like, or you're gonna look ridiculous or you're gonna look like a jerk. That the French people are amazing. But when it comes to pastries and food and bread and the culinary world, they know what they're talking about. And you can't, you just can't, you just can't go up against that. Sorry. Spe so speaking of that, a lot of the questions I got from Instagram were what I eat in a day or like what my favorite food is or what the best meal I've had since being here. Oh, I'm bouncing all over the place. This is a really good body best. This is amazing. I'm gonna go to the story. Gosh, I'm going all over the place. It's usually in a circle like I was saying earlier because um, when it first was invented, it was invented to commemorate the first uh, Tour de France, Tour de France, and oh, that was so snobby, okay. <laughs> anyway, and so, um, it was in the shape of a circle, like a wheel. And then first, Tour de France went from Paris to Brest, which is a city in the far west of France. So it's called a Paris Brest. Anyway, this is probably one of the best I've ever had, yeah. Yeah. I think I paid like five euros for it. It's like seven dollars. It's kind of expensive. They usually don't have to be that much, but this one is. So, back to the question. It's different, because when you're here on vacation, when I've been here on vacation, I you come with no like diet rules or anything, you know? Your goal is to eat as much good food as you possibly can in a two week, you know, week, whatever, period. And so, when you live here though, it's different, and you kind of have to adopt more of the French way. The French way is that you eat, this is what I love about the French, you eat whatever you want. If you have a sweet tooth, they eat dessert after every dinner, you know? Now a dessert, it isn't always a piece of cake, it isn't always a pastry, sometimes it's just chocolate, sometimes it's just fruit, sometimes it's just, um, a yogurt even after lunch, you know, because they really like to finish on a sweet note. That's something I've really developed. So after lunch, not after breakfast, but after lunch and dinner, I have to eat yogurt. I have to eat a square of chocolate. I have to eat both. I have to eat something like, I just have to finish it on a sweet note. So they eat whatever they want. The biggest thing I would say is moderation. They're really pretty strict about food times. When they eat, when they don't eat, you take your lunch pretty early, like one or 12, and then you have something called a quatre heures, or um, like a four o'clock snack, and you eat like an apple, or a carrot and hummus, you know, something, or a roll, you know, or something like a small salad, or like, even it doesn't, I'm kind of only mentioning healthy things, but even if you ate like, you know, kind of like a sugary something, or you had more or less a small meal, that's okay as well. Because then you eat dinner, not until like around eight o'clock usually. And there's a big taboo I feel like in the US about eating late, but here everyone does it. And it's kind of funny because we always say, eating late is bad for your health. After eight o'clock, it's bad for you, your digestion or whatever, it's gonna turn into fat because then you're not active after that. But the French people eat after eight, around eight or after eight, and they're skinnier than, the average French person is way less, 
weighs a lot less and is healthier than the average American, I would say. There's a book I read um, that a French person recommend I read, and I, I don't know if it's originally in French or English, but I read it in English. It's called French Girls Don't Get Fat. <laughs> and it said the, the title's girls, but it, but basically it talks about these rules. Eating within the season, eating appropriately, like fruits and vegetables that are in season, you know, according to the season, eating at certain times, respecting. The thing is, the biggest thing about the moderation is if you deprive yourself of something that you truly like, like something salty or fatty or sugary, then you go too long without eating it, then you kind of like cave later and you overeat and you overeat that one thing. Kind of like if you go too long without eating and people are like, I'm gonna starve myself or I'm not gonna eat until you know a certain hour. Or, you know, obviously it's hard to get onto a time schedule at first, but if you just like don't eat all day and then at the evening you overcompensate, you tend to overeat. So it's kind of the same kind of thing. Like you don't, you're supposed to, life, it's also kind of like a philosophical idea that life is meant to be enjoyed and if you don't eat the things you enjoy, then what's the point of good food or eating or having those, you know, eating, having things that you like to eat. So eat it, eat it every day, but don't eat too much of it and eat it when it's appropriate and enjoy the amount that you eat. The other thing is like, um, you get one, you get one square of chocolate, you would savor that one square of chocolate. You don't scarf it down and then you will be happy, hopefully, and it should be enough, you know, so it's kind of like, it's a really interesting concept. One of the other questions was the best thing I've had. So for example, we're in lockdown, so all the restaurants and cafes are closed. Um, before, I didn't really go out that often because I was trying to, I was having, I had a lot of expenses when I first got here. So I was trying to save my money. But at the same time, I also wasn't anticipating another lockdown. I kind of was, but I wasn't. So um, I didn't eat out a lot as well. So, but there was one restaurant I went to here the night before, I was like, okay, I better go out. The last night of freedom, I went out. Mm. I went out. Oh, I was savoring it. To a really good kind of rustic um, restaurant here in Cannes. And, um, I ordered something called a boudin. Boudin is not, it's a very particular flavor and taste and it's not a favorite of everyone. Um, boudin is kind of like blood sausage. So basically it's made from, it's made from blood. So it's a sausage made of coagulated blood and it's delicious. I mean, it depends on how it's say how it's you know flavored and everything. I think it's delicious. The texture is usually what gets people. It is kind of like creamy, almost like moussey, like a moussey sausage. People don't like that. So you have that, and it, it comes with like flambéed apples, and then on the side, I had um. Is there anything in my teeth? On the side, oh my gosh. On the side, I had um. Um. Uh, gratin. Gratin is um, basically layered cream and cheese and potatoes with more cheese on top and then it's baked, whacked in the oven and it gets all crunchy and crispy and nice and cooked on, on top. It's amazing. So that's what I had and it was a delicious last meal and um, yeah, it's super good. I recommend it. It's very French. So if you're ever here in France and you want to eat something very typically French, after that, the cuisine depends on really the region of France where you're in, and it changes so drastically, so fast. Um, but boudin is a very French thing, so. So what I eat in a day, probably, is not so much what I would eat if I were here on vacation. So I think that um, I do have a limited budget as well, so that also kind of plays into the whole thing. But um, I... Um, really, like, every once in a while, one of my favorite things to eat, and this is so cliché, but I really love to just stop by the boulangerie on the way home and get a baguette and then I eat the baguette with cheese and apples and like uh, cured meat, uh, like charcuterie and um, things like that. And uh, it's so, so good. That's the other thing about here is like, there are things that are just an abundance here that are so accessible and so easy to find that in the US, it's such like a, I think it's such a cliche or like a chic thing almost to buy. 
that you can only find it in like expensive stores or if you do find it wherever it's still super expensive so things like charcuterie charcuterie like any sort of cured meat any sort of like mozzarella here you can buy a big ball of mozzarella for like 75 cents um uh anything like that and it's a good quality like decent quality it's not the best but it's decent um so like anything like that is just so accessible here good bread like i remember one time i was in jackson hole wyoming and i went to a boulangerie they had there and i bought a baguette i think for four dollars three fifty four dollars and i was outraged like outraged because here you shouldn't pay more than like a euro and ten cents maybe a euro most of the time they're 90 cents for a baguette so i just was and it's like way better than you know it's just so good so on a daily basis i eat a lot of uh one thing i'm really obsessed with is um is something called like a salad niçoise salad niçoise is a niçoise salad you can't say it either way it's from nice and uh something about very mediterranean so you have tuna and like butter lettuce and uh anchovies and hard-boiled eggs and potatoes and um and uh you can put radishes tomatoes with like a usually like a mustard vinaigrette so i've been making that a lot it's so good not that expensive to make like really easy to compose so also um i love maybe this is the limited budget but i have been really on a pasta grind i love pasta pesto just simply with olive oil some tomatoes and garlic um i love that uh or some cheese just it's yeah not the best but um also i really like as well something i've been eating a lot lately is um i've been eating a lot of lentils so here lentils are a big deal like you just have like your your like your slice of ham you know like you just roll up your ham and you have some lentils that's all but it's like they're seasoned obviously so and it's super good i love it so just buy lentils if I, a little um can is like 57 cents so just buy a bunch of lentils and make soup with the lentils i um a lot of the, you know, it's according to the season. So there's a lot of butternut squash and pumpkin around and squash here. It's not because they're celebrating Thanksgiving or they're getting ready. It's just because it's in season. So it kind of works for me because it's kind of making me feel like in the Thanksgiving holiday mood. But it's also, um, you know, just because it's fall. So it's in season. So very cheap. So I've been making a lot of like lentil and butternut squash, uh, roasted pepper, butternut squash, lentil soup. Very good. So, um... Yeah, I do enjoy that. Uh, not always super French, probably, but um, it is good. I had a question about gluten. There's nothing here that's gluten-free. I mean, uh. oh my gosh. Mm. No, nothing is gluten-free. You're gonna find a lot. You're gonna find some stuff like that, especially in Paris, especially in Paris. It is pretty much like a fad, like it is in the U.S. But they, but I think, because, but the thing is that food is processed less, I feel like, and they just, like, that's just really unheard of. Why would you want to eat something gluten-free? No, nothing gluten-free. Especially if you go to, like, a boulangerie or something, they're not going to have a gluten-free baguette for you. They're not going to have gluten-free pastries for you. So it's just not really a thing. A lot of people ask, this is so embarrassing, but a lot of people asked if I had a French lover. No. No French lover. No. I don't even know what to say. That it's just not happening. Plus, I'm in, like, lockdown, so, like, I'm really only going to work, going to work out outside, and going grocery shopping. Like, there's really nothing else I can do. Nothing is open anyway, even if I wanted to. And I haven't had the time yet to make friends, so I couldn't, I'm not really sneaking out to go to people's houses either, so. Um, no, but I'll keep you guys updated. Maybe one day. Just haven't met anybody, so. Um, that's about it. I mean, a lot of the questions were really similar to those things. The lockdown is hard. Like, right now, one last thing, I guess. The lockdown is hard because, um, in France, they take it so seriously. And I respect it. There have been a few problems, apparently, this, with the second lockdown than there were with the first one. But, um, in general, they take it really seriously. Um, the French government has a site that you have to go on and you have to fill out and something called attestation, which is basically like a hall pass, you know? 
And if you leave your apartment or your house, it's only because you checked off one of those boxes. So you have to fill it out every time you leave and it updates and it has a new like QR code and you show that if you ever get stopped by the police. And um, which there, they are a lot of them outside. I, I walked down yesterday and there were a lot of them. Um, so you just fill that out. And the only reason, the only boxes there are to fill out that you're helping someone with a family emergency, that you're going to and from work, that you're going to go grocery shopping, that you have a medical appointment, that you're exercising within a kilometer of your house. You know, like you can't, if I run, I can't necessarily, I'm not, I do it all the time. But if I were to get caught and I had to show them that, because um, my address it is not within a kilometer of where I would be caught potentially, you know? So that's dangerous. The fine's 135 euros. It's like $150, $160. And um, yeah, that would really stink. It is. There was a few days there, like last week, when I was actually finally starting to get really blue. I don't really, like, get down on things like that. I don't get sad about, you know, I don't know. I'm not the toughest person in the world, like, by far. But that stuff doesn't bother me too much, and I was really enjoying being alone. But for, like, two days in a row last week, I was just, like, had no lights on in the apartment and just was lying on my couch and staring out the window and thinking about life for hours and then falling asleep and then waking up and doing it again and then going on a walk and then coming home and falling asleep again. It was a vicious cycle for like two days there. I'm bored still, but I'm okay now. So, but for like two days I was like, oh my gosh. I thought about going home. I thought about, I was like, this sucks. But um, no, that would not be worth it. So no, you just gotta suck it up and carry on, so. Thank you for the questions. I enjoyed this. Uh, sorry you couldn't be here to eat with me. Let me know on Instagram or on the comments below what you'd like me to talk about if you have any more things. If not, I don't know how many more videos there'll be, at least for the moment, because these are pretty lame, I'm sure. And, um, but yeah, salut les amis. Have a good day. Until next time.